welcome back to the channel. So quick uh, break from the normal way we do things here, putting this right up front. Uh, in this video, we are going to be talking about some firearms. Uh, there it is. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to go over the four cardinal firearms rules that uh, follow you everywhere you go. Um, so if you're going to own a gun, carry a gun, use a gun, these are with you wherever you go. Uh, you can break, you might be able to break one of them at a time, but if you start breaking more than one at a time, people are going to get seriously injured. So pay attention. Um, putting these right up front here, uh, partly as a public service announcement. Um, and also, you know, this video is going to be geared more towards people who are kind of getting started down uh, the path of self-reliance, self-defense. Um, so just wanted to get those out there right up front. Um, so, number one, every gun is always loaded. That's how you treat it. Uh, yes, this gun is loaded. Uh, even if I removed the magazine, racked, you know, ran the charging handle, round comes out, uh, I visually verify to see that it's empty, I'm still going to treat this like it's loaded. Just going to avoid any accidents uh, in, that, in that manner. So this gun is loaded. Even though I know there's not one in the chamber on that, I'm going to treat it like it's loaded. Uh, number two, uh, this is the business end down here called the muzzle. You never let that cross anything you don't want to destroy. So those are things probably like people, uh, people you love and care about. Property, televisions, cars, uh, things like that. Anything you don't want to destroy, don't let that muzzle cross it. Easy way to think about that, if you picture a like a lightsaber, laser beam coming right at the end of that. It's going to cut anything in half that it crosses. Don't let this cross anything that you don't want to destroy. So, for example, if you're standing where the camera is, I'm going to have it down, or if I need to move it, move around with it, change the orientation. Didn't point it at you a single time. All right. Uh, number three, uh, that's the trigger or the volume switch on this thing. Uh, you keep your finger off of that until your sights are aligned on the target and you've made the decision uh, that whatever you're aiming at needs to be shot. So, uh, in other words, keep your booger hook off the bang switch. Uh, all right. And uh, number four, always know your target and what's beyond it. Uh, so that's one reason we have a white light on uh, rifles, long guns that you're going to be using because potentially uh, you could be using it at night. You're going to want to identify what you're shooting at. Shooting at sounds, shooting at silhouettes, shooting at things like that, not acceptable. You need to know uh, that there is a threat or a bad guy that you're going to put those rounds on. Also, know what's beyond it. Um, because that round could go through that person or that thing and impact something behind it. So uh, there's a bad guy down a hallway, but your kid's room is past that. You may not want to shoot, or you may need to change that angle of that shot. That's why that rule is there, because you don't want it to go through the bad guy and then hit something you do care about. So uh, all guns are always loaded. Never let the muzzle cross anything you're not willing to destroy. Keep your finger off the trigger until those sights are on the, on the threat and you've made that decision to shoot. Uh, and know your target and what is beyond it. All right, guys, uh, that's it. I'm going to get back to the uh, video now. Uh, enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe. You'll hear me say that again later. Uh, but all right, get over there to the video. All right, guys. Hey, welcome back to the channel. As always, it doesn't matter who you are, how you found us. We're glad you're here. Uh, part two 
of home defense or defense during a disaster scenario. So in part one, we covered passive defense. So things like cameras, security stickers, uh, upgraded locks on your door, kick plates so that you can't, your door just can't be kicked in, uh, things of that nature. Things that are going to, you don't really have to be involved with, they're going to work for you when you're not, even when you're not there. Kind of hardening your defenses, uh, if you will, and you know, you can take that as far as you want um, and, and or get as high tech as you want. So, uh, in today we're going to talk about the active defense portion. So somebody has made it past those obstacles you've put uh, in place. So keep in mind uh, that, kind of like we talked about in the first one, that uh, all those things are there to buy you time. You know, a, a determined person or a criminal, uh, if they're wanting to get through that, through your defenses there, they're, they're going to. So hopefully you've detoured them, hopefully you don't have to uh, take the next steps we're going to talk about. But again, if somebody's got through, you should have a plan. So uh, number one, have a, you know, know who's in your house. What, do you have kids? Do you have guests over? You, parents or in-laws staying with you? Um, or do you run something like an Airbnb? Don't know what the rules are there, but things to consider. So you gotta be, you gotta think about these things. So they say, uh, so no, no plan survives contact with the enemy, but it's better to have a plan than to not have a plan. So you gotta have something to base what you're doing off of. So the idea of having that plan, you know, at what point are you going to start dialing 911? At what point are you going to uh, go to your guns, essentially, or activate the rest of your defense plan? Keep in mind, uh, you know, in even in uh, the best of times, when uh, you hear something strange outside the house, you know, are you going to dial 911 right away, or are you going to wait and see if there's an actual threat as to not raise like a false alarm. Something you gotta decide and think about. Uh, two, if you are going to dial 911, um, then keep in mind, the national average for police response time in the US is 10 minutes. And that was actually before 2020. Uh, at, since then, uh, there have been, um, you know, the defund the police movement, uh, departments have downsized, officers have quit, uh, things of that nature, that response time has actually gone up. So if you kind of want to get an idea about what you're talking about, uh, go sit somewhere, start a timer for 10 minutes, and wait and see how long 10 minutes actually is, and think about everything. If somebody's actively trying to kick in your door, or they're actually already in your house, Think about what could happen in that span of that 10 minutes. That'll give you kind of a reality check. Uh, and that's assuming that you were actually able to dial 911, communicate, uh, you know, where you are and what's going on for them to actually dispatch uh, somebody to you. So moving forward with your plan, you know, uh, you've made that call. Somebody's on the way, but you've got to take care of things, protect your family in the meantime. You're going to want something that's going to put the advantage, uh, hopefully, in your favor. Uh, so I'm going to start by talking about um, some other things other, other than firearms. Uh, I'm an advocate for firearms in that they are a great equalizer. They would allow uh, a person of small stature, uh, such as you know somebody who barely weighs uh, 100 pounds, uh, they could take on a much larger person uh, and come out uh, on top and successfully defend themselves versus in a just hand-to-hand -hand scenario, they'd be greatly disadvantaged. Or it's going to allow one person uh, to take on multiple attackers and uh, potentially come out on top. So those are kind of the two things where a firearm is a great equalizer. But uh, if you're not 
ready to take that step, uh, you're not comfortable with that step, there are other things that you can do. So I've got over here um, something that can give you a little bit of reach, something that's going to give you some advantage uh, over the attacker. You know, so the element of surprise, hiding around a corner, you know they're coming, something like that. But uh, believe it or not, I don't own a baseball bat. That's why there's no baseball bat up there. But a baseball bat is a good option. Uh, old flashlight. They don't. Not a lot of people have these anymore. Old mag light. But if you actually have batteries, some D cell batteries in there, this thing is quite heavy. Uh, plus, if you needed to, uh, you know, you can use it to look around if things are happening at night. Old nightstick there. Police nightstick. Um, Something like a hatchet, not necessarily the best option, not a lot of, not a lot of reach, um, but just something that's going to hopefully give you, again, that advantage. Not necessarily advocating for this, just have it up here that uh, something you could use. I've seen people use swords before. Um, got an axe handle here, so... You get these at our har hardware store. Uh, just an idea. Uh, now, when it comes to firearms, number one, check your state and local laws. Check the ordinances, what you can and cannot own. That's up to you. That's your responsibility um, because certain things may not be allowed where you are. So, yeah, check those out. Uh, second, where do you live? Do you live in an apartment? Do you live in a townhome? Do you live on a zero lot line housing addition where you're, you know, yeah, you've got like a postage stamp style yard, uh, but your neighbor's house is, you know, you could almost reach out one of your own windows and, and touch it, even though the structures are separate. Or do you live out in the country where you, you know, your house sits on a couple acres of land and you know, the nearest neighbor is a few miles away. That's going to help you determine kind of what you want to do, uh, which firearm you want to choose, and how you are going to use that uh, in, your, in your home. So a couple of different things you can do. Um, good choices for home defense. And again, this is all just uh, you kind of for the beginner here, uh, considerations. You know, first, you got your uh, trusty pistol, uh, if you wanted to have that uh, on the nightstand or in a, in a safe that you can access quickly. Also, uh, back to the state and local laws, if you have kids, you're going to want to make sure that this uh, stuff is secured uh, in a manner where uh, you can access it quickly, but they can't, they can't get into it. That's your public service announcement for that part of the video. Uh, all right, so uh, shotgun. Whoops, 12 gauge, readily available. Um, it's got a, this particular one, this used to be my home defense gun. But uh, it's got an extension tube on it, so the two can hold six, one in the chamber, if there's not one in there right now. Uh, side saddle. Side saddle here, so you've got some extra ammunition on the side. Uh, most of my log guns uh, have slings with tourniquet pouch on them. Um, I think that's important to always have that on, on your long gun. And then, of course, it's got a... A white light there because uh, if it's dark uh, you don't want to be explaining to the judge afterwards why you were just firing rounds into the dark and you couldn't see what you were shooting at. And then currently this is my current uh, home defense home defense gun. Uh, my, it's an AR obviously. So a red dot sight. Once again, the white light there. 
sling with a pout with a tourniquet on it. Uh, I've got this sling rigged up here in a little, I uh, forget what this thing is called, but it keeps this, it keeps it tight. So when I'm trying to take it in and out of the, of the safe that I keep it in, uh, quick access safe, uh, all I got to do, pull that and throw it over. And now I'm, now I'm ready to, to rock and roll. Uh, if, if I needed to. So that combined with this, kind of like my bump in the night bag, it's kind of what I call this. So I hear something inside, outside, uh, I go activate my safe. This is sitting right next to it. This goes over my shoulder here. Uh, this is packed full of medical gear, so I have two tourniquets on the outside here, as well as dressings and everything, uh, battle dressings on the inside, shears, uh, quick clot, trauma uh, stuff, air, nasal airways, and everything, uh, two spare magazines. This is probably overkill for anything I'm going to be in a home defense scenario uh, about. Uh, that would be a legendary home defense scenario if I needed to go through the magazine that's in the gun plus two more. Uh, usually you carry an extra magazine because more often than not you need a magazine because there might be a malfunction uh, with one, but got two on board because two fit in there. Um, chest seal back here. Other thing I carry on this in case the power's out when something like this happens is I have a flashlight here. Uh, another, it's a surefire. Um, carry this in here because I don't want to be pointing that gun. I don't want that. I don't want the flashlight on the gun to be the only flashlight that I have. Uh, I don't want to be pointing that at things, trying to look, look for something, and end up pointing it at, at something I care about, someone I care about. Uh, so this uh, gun in one hand, I can search uh, and do do other things because I don't. Not everything needs a gun pointed at it. Uh, and then I've got, uh, I think this is my old everyday carry knife. It's a Benchmade triage. Uh, so it's got the uh, blade there, and then it's got a seat belt uh, cutter there, um, and a glass breaker there. reason I chose uh, this, and I want to carry this on here, is because if I wake up in the middle of the night, and I've just got my uh, basically sleeping shorts or pajamas, pajama bottoms on, uh, I'm not going to have a knife in my pocket, so I want something. And I always think about, read a book when I was in grade school called Night of the Twisters, uh, something we read in Oklahoma is where I grew up. Uh, in that book, uh, one of the characters, there's a tornado coming, and they go to pick up the baby out of the crib, and the mobile's hanging down, and the baby gets caught up all in that thing, and it takes them a while to get it, uh, get them untangled so they can get to safety. So uh, something like this, it might be easier to uh, cut some wire uh, or, you know, a piece of string or something like that than trying to untangle it when twin time, when in a time is life uh, scenario. Uh, so that's just about it uh, for this. Uh, reason I have the shield on there, the Spartan Lambda, it's, uh, I'm the shield of my family. It's basically, that's how I look at it. So when I, when I have to throw this thing on, that's the mindset that I'm in. Um, all right. I think that just about covers it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, put it in the links below. Uh, I've got more information about home defense and everything like that in my uh, book on Amazon, and um, yeah, like the video, subscribe, uh, share with uh, friends, maybe somebody you know is just trying to get in to uh, this whole idea of being self-sufficient uh, and everything, uh, and so share this with them. All right, guys, uh, been good talking to you, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right, and before I let you go, uh, one thing you may want to consider is, um, you know, 
again, all of the other things from video one. I recommend doing all that stuff because what you don't want to do is end up having to go uh, to this stuff. At least I don't. That's like, I've got it in case I need it, but I really don't want to go there. I'd much rather uh, people just not have access, people not be able to get in. But in the event uh, you did have to use this, um, e even if it's a uh, completely justified self-defense scenario and you had to discharge a firearm uh, and shoot somebody, uh, you're going to end up in court. Um, there are uh, essentially carry insurance, so if you did have to defend yourself with a firearm, um, there's carry insurance out there that's going to help you find the right lawyer um, and help pay for those legal defense costs. So um, I personally use uh, Armed Citizens Legal Defense Fund, uh, actually Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network. I know what it is. Uh, Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network. I'll have a link for them down below. Um, they don't sponsor this at all, but um, any any interactions I've had with them, customer service wise, have been excellent, and um, just seem they're just a good bunch of folks. When you join, you get like a whole bunch of uh, DVDs uh, to essentially educate you on self defense scenarios. Uh, and, and things like that, things you can expect to face should you have to use your firearm. So uh, links down below, and I will uh, catch you guys in the next one. All right, take it easy.